Hello, welcome to the module on food biotechnology. Today we are going to see a new module on edible vaccines and nutraceuticals. This module deals with new approach to delivering vaccine antigens by the use of inexpensive oral vaccine such as edible vaccines. Edible vaccines are nothing but transgenic plant or animal based production of or those that contains agents which trigger animals immune response. In simple terms, we will be able to define edible vaccines as plant or animal made pharmaceuticals. The later part of the module, we would learn the concept of nutraceutical, which means any substance that is a food or a part of food which provide medical or health benefit such as prevention or treatment of diseases. Now, let us see the objective of this module. After completing this module, you will be able to number one, understand the concept of edible vaccines, mechanism of action and preparation of edible vaccine. Number two, comprehend the initial developments, current status, merits and demerits and applications of edible vaccines. Number three, know the fundamentals of nutraceuticals, their classification, its relation to functional foods and role as dietary supplements. As you are aware, this module is a part of food biotechnology paper. This is designed to explain the concept of edible vaccines, mechanism of action and preparation of edible vaccine. You will learn the initial development and current status of edible vaccine production along with merits, demerits and their application. In this module, you will also learn the fundamentals of nutraceuticals as dietary supplements and the relation to functional food. Now, let us first look into the topic on edible vaccine. In the last decade, Advances have been made in the field of medicine and healthcare have been possible. This is because of the development of newer, safer and highly effective vaccines, recombinant vaccines, subunit vaccines, peptide vaccines and DNA vaccines. Though these vaccines have advantage over traditional, conventional vaccine, they do have some disadvantage. Not only are these vaccines very expensive, but the storage and transportation pose a problem as Many of them require refrigeration, which is a disadvantage in many developing countries. Thus, an alternative, plants have been chosen as a cheap, safe and efficient production system for vaccine and thus the concept of edible vaccine was born. Edible vaccines are nothing but transgenic plant or animal based production of or those that contains agent which trigger animals immune response. In simple terms, edible vaccines may be defined as plant or animal made pharmaceuticals. The earliest demonstration of an edible vaccine was nothing but the expression of a surface antigen from the bacterium Streptococcus mutans in tobacco which causes dental caries. Scientists have found out that the bacterial antigen could simulate the mucosal immune response which would prevent the bacteria from colonizing the teeth and therefore protect against tooth decays. Now let us see the mechanism of action of this edible vaccine. The most effective route of muc mucosal immunization is oral route. Why? Because oral vaccine can generate mucosal immunity, antibody mediated immune response and cell mediated immune response. The antigen containing the plant vaccine when introduced orally does not get degraded by gastric enzyme. This is because these bacteria have got a tougher outer wall in that cell. So the release of antigen and its breakdown from plant vaccine occurs near Peyer's patches of intestine. You will be seeing from the figure that the released antigen is first taken up by the M cells. After the M cells take up these antigen, they are then presented to B cells with the help of a type of cell known as antigen presenting cell or APC shortly. This antigen presenting cell will present the antigen to the T cell which in turn activates the B cell. Once the B cell get activated, it get differentiated into plasma cells. Now they start secreting IgA class of antibody and elicit mucosal immunity and humoral immunity. Another important component of mucosal immunity is T cell mediated immune response which is otherwise known as cell mediated immune response where the T cells specifically recognize pathogen and directly kill the invader themselves. It also helps directly to the antibodies to clear infection. We shall then see how to develop an edible vaccine. The developing an edible vaccine 
is not so easy. The foreign DNA which encodes for that vaccine could be introduced into the plant genome in two ways. Number one, bombarding embryonic suspension cell cultures using gene gut or transforming the particular DNA into a naturally occurring soil bacterium as we are all aware that it is agrobacterium tumefician. This agrobacterium tumefician has, has got a type of DNA known as tDNA. This bacterium which is a soil bacterium has the ability to get into plants through some kind of wound. For example, if there is any scratch in the plant, it gets into the plant cell. This bacterium, it possesses a type of plasmid known as circular TA plasmid meaning tumor inducing plasmid which enables it to infect plant cell, integrate into that genome and produce a tumor known as crown gall tumor. This ability can be exploited to insert a foreign DNA encoding vaccine into plant genome. But before this, the plasmid has to be disarmed by deleting certain genes, mainly the genes for auxin and cytokine synthesis so that it does not produce tumor. You may also have to delete some disease causing genes from the plasmid. In the meanwhile, the selection for transformed cell containing the desired foreign DNA can be made by incorporating a gene for antibiotic resistance in the plant vector so that only the transformed cell containing desired foreign DNA could grow in an antibiotic containing medium. So from the figure you would have known about how to make a edible vaccine. Now the DNA from the plasmid would have integrated randomly into the plant genome resulting in a different antigen expression level for each independent line so that 50 to 100 plants are transformed together at a time from which one can choose the plant expressing the high levels of vaccine antigen and least number of adverse effects. The resultant edible plant vaccine can be utilized for further immunological studies. Now we shall look into what are the possible candidates for edible vaccine. What are the foods under study as alternative to injectable vaccine include bananas, potatoes and tomatoes as well as lettuce, rice, wheat, soybean and corn. When choosing a plant to be used as a vaccine, it should follow these following characteristics. It is important to note that it should be a hardy, palatable plant with high nutritive value and protein content. Number two, the plant is also one that would be indigenous to the country in which it is used and should also be transformed with relative ease. Tobacco plants have been extensively used in the production of edible vaccine, but recently work is being taken in potatoes, tomatoes, lettuce, corn and other crop plants. Lettuce might replace booster shots in the next generation of vaccines. Potatoes serve as a good system to test the idea of edible vaccines. Bananas are also good candidates for edible vaccines as they are eaten raw, inexpensive to produce and native to many developing countries. Tomatoes serve as ideal candidates for HIV antigen because unlike other transgenic plants that carry the protein, tomatoes are edible and immune to thermal processing. So you don't have any denaturation of your vaccine antigen, which helps to retain its healing process. Tobacco is a good model system for evaluating the production of recombinant proteins. However, it produces toxic compounds, which makes it unsuitable for vaccine delivery. Recent studies have shown that mammalian proteins can be expressed in high levels of transgenic rice and potato was the major system first to be used for vaccine production. During the last years, potatoes have been evaluated for the production of human serum albumin, novel vaccine candidate, tumor necrosis factor alpha and antibodies. Having learned about the candidates for ideal edible vaccine, now we shall learn the initial developments in designing the edible vaccine. The concept of edible vaccine was developed by Hansen in early 1990s. He fell upon the idea after he attended a conference in New York organized by World Health Organization. The first report of providing the proof of edible vaccine was published under the International Patent Cooperation Treaty in the year 1990. However, it got impetus and holds promise as low-cost vaccine production system after the expression of a antigen known as hepatitis B surface antigen in tobacco plants as shown by Charles Anston and co-workers. 
a number of attempts have been made subsequently to express various antigen in plants. Now, we should know the current status in edible vaccines. Having looking at the current status, several plant derived vaccines for human use are approaching the market. But it is likely that the first commercial plant derived vaccine will be a veterinary vaccine. At least 30 such products have been expressed in plants, some providing protection against challenges with disease causing agents. The trial carried out by Prodigine company showed that for the first time that an oral vaccine produced in plants could prevent livestock against virulence challenge. Now we can confirm that edible vaccines are also produced against uh, livestock animal vaccines. The first product to reach the market could be a poultry vaccine developed by a company Dow AgroSciences was proposed for the market release in 2006. Now we will look into the advantages and disadvantages of edible vaccine. If you see the advantages, number one, they are cheap, therefore they can be mass produced. They can be ingested by eating the plant part of the plant. Hence the need to process and purify does not arise. Extensive storage facilities like cold storage, they are not required. If the local or native crop of a particular area is engineered, to produce vaccine, then the need for transportation and distribution can be eliminated. More importantly, they trigger the immunity at the mucosal surface such as those that line the mouth, the mucosal immunity which is the body's first line of defense. Now let us look into the disadvantage of edible vaccine. Number one, the possibility of development of immune tolerance to the vaccine, peptide or protein may arise. Number two, Consistency of dosage differs from plant to plant and generation to generation. The protein content, the patient age, weight, ripeness of the fruit and quality of the food e eaten in the absence of availability of methods of sanitization of plant material. Number three, the stability of vaccine differs from plant to plant. Number four, some food cannot be eaten raw, for example potato it and needs cooking which will denature or weaken the protein or the vaccine present in it. The five, variable condition for edible vaccine are also a major problem. For example, if you take potatoes containing vaccine, it should be stored at four degrees and it could be stored for longer time while tomatoes does not last long. Number six, need for proper distinguishing characters to be identified between a vaccine fruit and normal fruit should be done because this may lead to misadministration of vaccine which could lead to tolerance. Nutraceutical. The term nutraceutical was originally defined by Dr. Stephen L. Diffilis, the founder and chairman of the foundation and chairman of the foundation of innovation medicine FIM shortly. However, its meaning was modified by Health Canada which defined nutraceutical as a product isolated or purified from food and generally said in medicinal forms not usually associated with food and demonstrated to have a physiological benefit or provide protection against chronic disease. Examples are beta carotene and lycopene. Dr. Stephen Defilis coined the term nutraceutical from nutrition and pharmaceutical in 1989. Many nutraceuticals, functional foods and naturally occurring compounds that have been investigated and reported in various studies reveal that these products are extremely active and often have little adverse effect. The nutraceutical market in India is estimated to grow to US dollar 2731 million in 2016 at a CAGR of 13% which was reported by Biospectrum Asia edition during 16th March 2012. Let us see the benefits of nutraceuticals. From the consumer's point of view, functional foods and nutraceutical may offer many benefits. Number one, it may increase the health value of our diet. It may help us live longer. It may help us to avoid particular medical condition. It may have a psychological benefit from doing something for oneself. May be perceived to be more natural than traditional medicine and less likely to produce unpleasant side effects. The last may present food for population with special need, for example, nutrient dense foods for the elderly. Having looked at the benefits of nutraceutical, now you learn the classification of nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals can be classified into two types. 
considering the promise of nutraceutical number 1 potential nutraceuticals number 2 established nutraceuticals a potential nutraceutical is one that holds a promise of a particular health or medical benefit they become established only if there are sufficient clinical data to demonstrate such a benefit however it is not encouraging as the vast majority of nutraceutical products are in the potential waiting category to become established so whatever nutraceutical we are having they are only potential nutraceutical it may take some time to establish clinical data to become an established nutraceutical the food products which are used as nutraceuticals can be classified as number 1 probiotic prebiotic dietary fiber omega 3 fatty acid and antioxidant how is the term nutraceutical linked with other related terminologies a lot of confusion exists regarding the terminologies like nutraceuticals some say functional foods some say dietary supplements some even say designer foods some say medical foods some say pharma foods and some say even phytochemicals but the meaning is the same the pharmaceuticals as you say may be considered as drugs used to treat diseases while nutraceuticals are those that are intended to prevent diseases this is the major difference between a nutraceutical and a pharmaceutical within european medicine law a nutraceutical can be defined as a medicine for two reason number 1 it can be used for the prevention treatment or cure of a condition or disease or be administered with a view to restoring correcting or modifying physiological function in human beings medical foods are a special category of therapeutic agents that are intended for nutritional management of a specific disease an example of medical food is formulations intended to manage patients with inborn errors in amino acid metabolism like phenylketonuria alkaptonuria and albinism newer medical foods are designed to manage conditions like hyper homocysteinemia which means high levels of homocysteine in blood pancreatic exocrine insufficiency if there is any deficiency of pancreatic exocrine enzymes like chymotrypsinogen chymotrypsin etc inflammatory conditions and other diseases food is generally regarded as safe whereas nutraceutical may contain some substances that are natural but may not be generally regarded as safe when functional foods aids in the prevention and or treatment of diseases and or treatment of disorders other than anemia it is called a nutraceutical examples of nutraceuticals includes fortified dairy products the fortified means the milk is added with extra calcium or extra casein any protein and citrus fruits like orange juice and these orange juice or citrus fruits may contain a type of nutraceutical known as antioxidants and vegetables antioxidants are those compounds which will prevent against oxidation whenever oxygen enters your body whenever there is a normal oxygen metabolism the oxygen undergoes oxidation to produce free radicals which are very highly toxic highly stable and they are very highly unstable snatch electrons from macromolecules such as proteins lipids and they create a chain reaction and uh, resulting in cell damage which may result in free radical mediated diseases like cancer cardiovascular diseases diabetes and many neurodegenerative diseases for this free radical to get stabilized or neutralized these antioxidants which are supposed to be the strong reducing agents provides the electrons and uh, stop the chain reaction and make the free radical stable so that cell damage does not occur when we start about the dietary supplement dietary supplement health and education act dhseea defined dietary supplement using several criteria these are some of the criteria a dietary supplement is a product other than tobacco that is intended to supplement the diet that bears or contains one or more following dietary ingredients any dietary supplement should contain a vitamin mineral and herb or medicinal plant or other botanical and amino acid and a dietary substance for use by man to supplement the diet by increasing the total dietary intake or a concentrate metabolite constituent extract or combination of these ingredients so the second criteria is a dietary supplement is intended for ingestion in pill capsule tablet or liquid form a dietary supplement is not represented for use as a conventional food or as the sole item of a meal or a diet any dietary supplement should be labeled as a dietary supplement that is one of the criteria 
dietary supplement includes products such as an approved new drug, certified antibiotic or licensed biologic that was marketed as a dietary supplement or food before approval, certification or license. Thus, nutraceutical differ from dietary supplement in the following aspect. Number 1. Nutraceuticals must not only supplement the diet but also aid in the prevention and or treatment of disease and or disorder. Number 2. Nutraceuticals are represented for use as a conventional food or as a sole item of meal or diet. We introduce a new term functional foods which has some relation to nutraceuticals. What are functional foods? Functional foods are designed to allow the consumer to eat enriched foods close to the natural state rather than by taking dietary supplement manufactured in either liquid or capsule form. Functional foods have been enriched or fortified a process known as nutrification. Sometimes additional complementary nutrients are added such as vitamin D to milk. Sometimes calcium can also be added to milk. Health Canada defines functional foods as ordinary foods that has components or ingredients added to give it a specific medical or physiological benefit other than a purely nutritional effect. In Japan, all functional foods must meet three established requirements. Foods should be, according to them, present in their naturally occurring form rather than a capsule, tablet or powder. It should be consumed in the diet as often as daily. It should regulate a biological process in hope of preventing or controlling disease. Now we will see a new word pharmaceutical F-A-R-M-A-C-E-U-T-I-C-A-L-S. According to a report written for the United States Congress entitled Agriculture a Glossary of Terms, Programs and Law, pharmaceutical is a meddling of words between farm and pharma pharmaceuticals. It refers to medically valuable compounds produced from modified agricultural crops or animals usually through biotechnology. Example, broccoli which is being produced is a pharmaceutical which may help in the prevention of cancer. You can see the list of incomplete list of foods with reported medicinal value in your slide. Number one is antioxidants. I told much about antioxidants. More amount of antioxidants are present in fruits and vegetables. One of the main antioxidants present in grape, red grape product is resveratrol. Another antioxidant present in citrus tea and wine is flavonoids which come under the category of polyphenols. Dark chocolate foods, anthocyanins which is a colored antioxidant which is only mainly found in berries and vitamin C. Soluble dietary fiber products such as psyllium seed husk may help in reducing hypercholesterolemia. Broccoli and fiddle heads may help in preventing cancer. Alpha linoleic acid from flax or chia seeds. Omega 3 fatty acids present in fish oil may result in lowered risk of cardiovascular disease. In addition, many botanical and ex herbal extracts such as ginseng, garlic oil have been developed as nutraceuticals. Now let us learn what is the relationship between nutraceuticals and disease. Nutraceuticals are currently receiving recognition as being beneficial in coronary heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer, osteoporosis and other chronic and degenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease. Evidences indicate that the mechanistic action of natural compounds involve a wide variety of biological process which includes activation of antioxidant defenses, signal transduction pathways, cell survival associated gene expression, cell proliferation and differentiation and preservation of mitochondrial integrity. It appears that these properties play a crucial role in the protection against many pathologies of numerous age related or chronic diseases. It is very imperative that nutrients found in many foods, fruits and vegetables are responsible for the well documented health benefits. For example, lutein and zeaxanthin prevents cataract. This lutein is mainly present in egg yolk. It also prevents macular degeneration. Beta carotene and lycopene protect the skin from ultraviolet radiation damage. Lutein 
and lycopene. This lycopene is one of the antioxidant present in tomatoes. They may benefit cardiovascular health and lycopene may help prevent prostatic cancer. Next, we will discuss the scope and opportunity of Indian nutraceutical markets because that is becoming a current uh, trend nowadays in India because India is uh, richly supplied with our natural diversity more amount of plants we have more amount of herbs we have so more amount of medicinal plants are used for the preventing diseases so the concept of nutraceutical is supplied to Indian scenario rather than the other countries if you see the Indian nutraceutical market valued at one million dollars if you see the Indian nutraceutical market valued at 1480 million dollars in 2011 it could grow to 2731 million dollars in 2016 according to the report by business research and consulting from frost and sullivan functional fruits will be quickest growing category followed by dietary supplements until 2005 as per the study the global nutraceutical market was estimated to be 1495 billion dollars in 2011 with us Europe and Japan being the largest regional markets accounting for nearly 93% of the global nutraceutical demand. The globalization of the nutraceuticals and functional fruit industries present significant challenges to stakeholders, not the least of which is the regulatory variance between countries active in the marketplace. Nutraceuticals are playing an important role in the development of future therapeutics, but it depends on the control of purity efficacy and safety. Now coming to the Indian scenario in nutraceutical research, we know that nutrition is a purely understood concept in India. The percentage of people who are properly nourished is very very small. This imbalance of nutrition pattern gives rise to three categories of people. The one who is overnourished which accounts for about 80 million people. The one who is undernourished which accounts for 380 million people and the one who is nourished with calories but not nutrients which accounts for 570 million people. The entire population below the poverty line have been considered as undernourished irrespective of their calorie intake. Similarly, the people who consume less than 175 gram of fruits and vegetables in a day have been considered deficient in micronutrient. Thus, the present need of consumer is to supplement food with external nutrients to avert disease condition. Now, to conclude, edible vaccines might be a solution that will enable the positive effects of vaccine of reaching and to decrease the potential hazards associated with parenteral vaccines such as toxic compounds, allergic responses and risk of attenuated strain reverting to pathogenic strains. Edible vaccines offers a way to deliver a vaccine orally without the need for the cold chain decreasing the cost of production and shipping and may be ideal for bioweapons and veterinary use among other benefits. Now about nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals are available in the form of isolated nutrients, dietary supplements and specific diets to genetically engineered foods, herbal products and processed foods. Nutraceuticals provide all the essential substance that should be present in a healthy diet for the human. Nutraceuticals always provide energy and nutrient for maintaining optimal health. Nutraceuticals are widely used in food and pharmaceutical industries nowadays. I hope this from this module you have been benefited on the concept of edible vaccine and nutraceutical.